this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice today. We've got some people in the sanctuary. If you're glad to be in the room today, you ought to just give God a quick Hallelujah. praise in the sanctuary. If you're watching us by way of stream, you ought to give God a praise, right? Come on, you can do better than that just to be alive today. It's good just to be alive today and in the house of the Lord. Today is going to be one of those amazing days. God has given me a word of deliverance. And all you've got to do today, whether you're in the sanctuary or whether you are watching us by way of stream, all you have to do today is make the choice that you want to be delivered from shame today. Today, the devil is going to get off your neck. He's going to get out your mind. He's going to get off your back. He's going to get out your family. He's going to get out your finances. He's going to be left in your history. As a matter of fact, I know we're just starting, but can you give God a praise in advance for the deliverance that's going to happen? Come on, just open your mouth, lift up your hand. If you're watching me on stream, open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth and give God a praise in advance for what's going to happen in here on today. Pastor, it's, it's going to be amazing Listen, today. I can't wait, Bishop. I know the Lord has given you a blessed word, and we can't wait to see what he's going to do in this place. He's already here. I feel his presence. And so we're going to get started. We don't, we're going to move out of the way. Yeah. Yeah, we got our, so we have our millions, well, he, trillions, Travis billions. Travis got us looking like the Alpha and Omega with well, these colors. You, def you are Alpha in one <laughs> way, but I'm definitely Omega in every way. And uh, so we're helping out our so nephew. We, yes, trying this, to support. Yeah, this is a shirt he did. We just talked to him a few minutes ago uh, to change the mind shift of the uh, uh, mindset of the black community to build generational wealth that we're declaring yeah. generational wealth upon the black community. Yeah. That's, that's what we're declaring today. So hey, millions, billions, trillions. Millions, trillions. Billions, is it millions, billions, billions trillions. trillions? I never had that kind of money, so I didn't know what order it was <laughs> in. You know what I mean? I need you to know the order, baby. So listen, here's what I need you to do. If you're watching on Facebook, I need you to swipe and invite. Need you to share, text somebody, tag somebody, tell somebody. If you know somebody that deals with shame, I need you to call them right now. Tell them that they need to be a part of this work. Man, listen, that countdown was different this oh, yes. morning. Yes, the it glory was, was on that yeah, countdown. Yeah, it was. It's going to be one of those kind of days today. So I need you to get ready. I need you to go ahead and gulp down your scrambled eggs and your, your uh, McDonald's number two. That's the sausage egg McMuffin. Get rid of it, and I need you to get somewhere in a posture where you can really feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Praise team, listen, we're going to jump right into it. The praise team is going to worship us into it, and I'm going to get right into this word. It's going to be an amazing day. Hey, listen, I know you're in the sanctuary. Y'all been used to chilling, you know, digging on the scene with a virtual lean. You've been at home so you've been used to you know relaxing on the couch but you back in the energy of the sanctuary today so i need you to be engaged with the praise team i need you to worship this morning i need you to worship while you're watching us virtually this morning all right jeremy come on lead us out of here praise the lord everybody that was okay if you were at home praise the lord everybody let's open up our mouths Come on, begin to open up your mouth. If you know that God is good and he's worthy to be praised, we want to give God the greatest praise that we have. So let's open up our mouths and really send up a praise that matches his goodness. God, we love you. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. No matter what I see or how I feel, as long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. Do you believe that God is good and every breath that you have belongs to him? Come on, help me sing it. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise. And his praise. 
No matter what I see or how I feel, as long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Yeah, let us exalt His name together. Let's lay down our crowns and lift up His name. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Now, I know that you come to give God the greatest praise. If not, you want to came all the way to the sanctuary. So we'll sing it one more time. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all. Yeah. And his praises. And his praises God, we give you the glory. No matter what I no see or how I, I feel. how I feel. As long as I'm breathing. As long as I'm breathing. Oh, yes, I'm breathing. Oh, yes, I'm breathing. I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Yeah, let us exalt His name together. Yes, God. Let's lay down our crowns and lift up His name. some Holy Ghost noise in this place. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. You got to put those hands together. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. What we mean by do it together is praise the Lord. Let's do it. Let's do it together. Now maybe you can testify with this right here. Listen, say you've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. I know that somebody's testimony. You've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. Said you've been better than good to you've me. Been better than good to me. I know he's been good to me. Said you've been better than good to you've me. Better than good to me. Right here. Hey. Said you've been better than good to you've me. Been better than good to me. I got a chance to lift my voice. You've been better than good to you've me. Better than good to me. I get a chance to lift my hands. You've been better than good to you've me. Been better than good to me. Somebody to help me declare you've been better than good to you've me. Been better than good. But you've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. That's somebody's testimony. Ooh, I should have lost my mind. Should have lost my mind. Oh, you've been better. You've been better. Yes, God. God, we give you glory. Hey, I should have been dead. I should have been dead. But you've been better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. God has been just that good. Five people 
a leap with me right here? Hey! Cause you've been better than good to me. 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 Lord, you're a keeper. Lord, you're a healer. And you've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. Open up your mouth and give him glory. Come on, let him hear your praise. Let your praise match his goodness. If he's been good, lift your voice. Lord, we bless you. Now open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever and ever and ever. Surely goodness, surely mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So if you never do another thing, you've done enough. Now if you believe that, open up your mouth. That's okay if God's been okay. If God's been good, open up your mouth. God, we thank you. Let's exalt the name of God. Let's exalt his name. God, we love you. God, we lift you. God, we magnify you. God, we give you glory. God, we honor you. God, we love you. God, we thank you. We're not asking you for anything, God, but we just want to simply say thank you. God, we thank you for being good. We thank you for being a way maker. God, we thank you for being a sustainer. But most of all, we thank you for being our God. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. Because you are my God. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. Thank you, Jesus. I will exalt you. This is why. Because you are my God. Can you help me sing? I will exalt. I will exalt you. Come on, you can lift your voice all over this room. I will exalt you. With the fruit of my lips, I will. I will exalt you. Because you are my God. enough to give him praise. I will, I will exalt you. Oh, oh. I will exalt you. Oh, oh, oh. I will exalt you. You are my God. Now, can we hear you cry out? Sing it with us. I will, I will exalt you. When you don't have words to say, I will exalt you. Yes, Lord. I will exalt you. Sound real sweet. Cause you are my God. part that says, you're my hiding place, 
Treasure Lord. You are your my friend and king. Anointed one. Most holy. My hiding place. My hiding. My safe refuge. My treasure, Lord. God, that's who you are. You're my friend and king. Yeah, yeah. Anointed one. Most holy. shadow of death I will not <laughs> no matter what comes against me it's because because you're with me what the devil meant for evil because you're with me 
God turned it around for your good. We not dismayed would ever be tired. I will not, I will not fear. See, I will not fear, I will not fear. Come on, declare it all over the room. I will not fear, I will not fear. Yeah, yeah. I will not fear. Cause I have no reason to fear. I said I have no reason to fear. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. Come on, we gotta declare it. I will. I have no reason to fear. Yeah, come on, get it in you. I have no reason to fear. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. Come on, declare it with me real quick. I, I have no reason to fear. Come on, all over the room. I know you got it already. I have no reason to fear. The Lord is my light. 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 Because you're with me. Now you take that with you. Because you're with me. I will not fear. I will not fear. The enemy. The enemy knew that today was going to be one of those days. God had really kind of shown it to me yesterday. He had really shown me what was going to happen. So we had a few technical difficulties. I really don't know what happened, uh, where the internet went out. Uh, and I kind of figured the, the enemy wasn't going to let happen what was already in the spirit without trying to interrupt something in the natural. Did you hear what I said? The fact that we had the difficulty is, is confirmation that God's about to do something in this room and in whatever room you're watching me on right now. I want to say to you right now, whatever else, yada, whatever else you're doing, multitasking, stop it right now. Whatever else you're doing, well, all of those watching me on Zoom, what, what, whatever else you're doing, whatever else you're doing, I need you to put it down right now because the deliverance that's going to happen in this room and in your room today is going to be unlike anything you've ever experienced in your life. I'm seeing people all now on Facebook now. Yes, I see all of you declaring that you will not fear all over the place so if you're on facebook do me a favor hit your share button again or text somebody and tell them we're back up and we're ready for this word god's going to listen 
Today is the day where you lose all your shame. I want to say that one more time. I invited people through the leading of the Holy Spirit to join us in the sanctuary today. There are people all over this sanctuary. There are families in this sanctuary today. And I am declaring today that shame is leaving your life today. I decree it. I declare it. And if you believe it, I need you just to slip your hands in the air. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Woo. We will not fear. Oh. <laughs> Have your way in this place Because the Lord is my life yeah. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Yeah, I will not fear I will not fear. Come on, get that in your spirit. Come on, if you're going to get rid of that shame today, come on. I will not fear. Come on, all on Zoom, all on social media, all on the website. Come on. I will not fear. Yeah. I will not fear. I will, I will not the Lord is my light, and I will not fear. Will not fear. The Lord is my salvation, and I will, I will not fear. I will wait on the Lord and be of good courage. I will not fear. He shall strengthen. He shall strengthen. He shall strengthen. He shall strengthen. Shall strengthen my heart. Yeah, I will. The Lord will strengthen. I will not fear. Come on, can you lift your hands in the air and just say it? I will not fear. Come on, on Zoom, on Facebook, say it. I will not fear. Ah! Though the waters roar, shake with their swelling, I will. Though a host should encamp about me, I will not. Ah! One thing have I desired of. Seek after. I'm gonna dwell in his house. I'm gonna dwell in his house. I'm gonna dwell to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall.
Hey, we're getting ready for this word. But listen, I need you to put a seed in the ground. Woo! As we get ready for this word this morning. Oh, glory. Your giving is so important. It's so important. And so this morning, the tithe, but the air to the Anybody feel it other than me? <laughs> the tithe belongs to the Lord. The seed belongs to the Lord. I need y'all to give so we can get rid of this cheap internet we got. <laughs> get our fiber optic in place. <laughs> I need y'all to give because ministry is going forward in this place. I need you to give over and above. Don't forget your Isaac seed. If you were in Bible study last Wednesday, if you weren't, I would encourage you to go back and listen. Because the prophetic word that we left Bible study with was, even when I'm creating Ishmael, God still got his eyes on Isaac. <laughs> and I encourage everybody that until Isaac shows up, Isaac could be your business, your job, uh, the restoration of your family whatever it is you've been believing god for until it shows up you are to sow a 22 dollar seed every time we gather the holy spirit told it to me it was in genesis 22 where isaac finally came so on top of your tithe and on top of your offering put that back up one more time for me please give this morning give this morning your giving is important not to pay bills, it's important because your seed sets the stage for the supernatural. This morning in the sanctuary, of course, you give all of those electronic ways. If you give through an envelope, we're going to have a receptacle at the back as you leave. And you can uh, give that. So, Jeremy, or somebody, if I forget, we can just put it back there for me. Thank you. Trustees are out front, of course, for those who pull up, drive up to give and to bring your tithe unto the Lord this morning. I want you to give in a very special way and then sow your $22 seed because I'm believing that even while I'm dealing with Ishmael, God is still working on my eyes. Lord, have mercy. That's the word for today. Y'all ready for this word? Woo, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have y'all go ahead and take your seats because these are some long verses I'm going to read. Father, now, Ooh, sanctify this moment, purify this moment, set this moment aside and apart. <sighs> I already know just by the things that have gone on that your glory is going to sit down on this place in a special way. So do it this morning, God. I move out of my way, move out of your way. I get self out of the way so that I can see in the spirit and hear in the spirit in Jesus name amen listen um, I want to thank our intercessors who greeted all of the worshipers who came this morning they made a declaration to everybody as they walked in that today is the day you lose your shame and I want to say to everybody listening, this only works if you make the choice to receive it. But God is going to deliver some of you today from shame that you've been dealing with all of your life. Afterwards, we've got some intercessors for those of you who are in the sanctuary. We're going to have some prayer lines. We're going to do it according, of course, to CD regulations. And so you'll see the yellow uh, uh, what do you call those things? Placards on the ground. You stand there. We've got three intercessors that will be down front that have been intentionally chosen to pray over you. For those of you watching me by way of stream, our prayer lines will be available on today. If you all could put those two prayer lines up for me, our intercessors will be uh, waiting on you to call. And I know uh, that the lines will be flooded after this word today. Those are those two numbers. I'll put them up again uh, at the end of this 
uh, lesson. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. And I'm going to start uh, right at verse 1. Right at verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. and You must not touch it or you will die. You will certainly not die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his woman heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day and they hid from the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked so I hid. God said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly. You will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. See, that's why y'all should blame every snake you see. All the women, blame every snake you see. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through pain, painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground. Since from it you were taken, for dust you are, dust you will return. Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Verse 10 said, Adam said, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. I, I just want you to repeat this with me, whether on Zoom, Facebook, whether you're on our YouTube channel, our website, in the sanctuary. I need you to yell it loud beyond those masks. Don't take them off, but just yell, no longer a shame. Oh, I hear y'all real good. I hear you real good. As we begin on today, I want to ask you, have you ever had one or more of these thoughts? I am unlovable. I am unworthy. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not accomplished enough. I'm not friendly enough. I'm not spiritual enough. I'm not good enough. I'm ashamed of how codependent I am. I'm ashamed of how closed off I am. I'm ashamed 
of how scared I am. I'm ashamed of how apathetic I am. I'm ashamed of how lost I am. I'm ashamed of how damaged I am. I'm ashamed of how hurt I am. I'm ashamed of how insecure I am. I'm ashamed of how used I am. I'm sure all of us at some point I've had feelings of some type within the categories that I name shame. Shame is a powerful tool the enemy uses to keep us locked in our failures and scared of our future. Shame, that, that feeling that the enemy uses to try to convince you that you are what you've done. After all, he is the accuser. His, his job is to constantly update us about the current gap between our ideal self and our actual self. The gap between our ideal personality and our actual personality. The gap between our ideal relationships and our actual relationships. The gap between our actual feelings and our ideal feelings. The gap between our ideal weight and our actual weight. The gap between our ideal marriage and our actual marriage. Shame, shame can be a cord that connects us to some of the darkest places in our lives. One author defines shame as the intensely painful feeling or experience of believing that we are flawed and therefore unworthy of love and belonging. Something we have experienced, something we have done, something we have failed to do or something we allow to be done or something we didn't allow to be done but got done to us makes us feel unworthy of connection and unworthy of life when, when you are ashamed it means you condemn self disqualify self hate self and you are convinced that others believe the same about you. Some of you have already grown uncomfortable. Whether you're watching me on stream or whether you're in the sanctuary, some of you now are trying to find something else to do, whether it be scrolling and posting on Facebook or checking emails or going into the kitchen to check your breakfast because the enemy already wants you distracted so you don't feel the pain that's going to be your deliverance today. It's the painful memory of an episode that torments, that tears down, that stigmatizes. It causes toxic thoughts that demean, devalue, and depress you. Shame. Jesus is toxic to your system and everyone including me struggles with shame whether you're conscious of it or not shame has a way of making us live small hoping we will never live the life we were created to live but this morning through the power of the Holy Spirit I want to help to deliver somebody who's been quietly living with private shame, Jesus, so that you can begin to heal. Watch this. I want you to heal today so that you begin to speak from your scars and not your open wounds. Jesus, today I want, I want to help somebody heal today 
so that you can start liking yourself and others can start liking you. <laughs> Come with me to this very familiar text. Eve has had this conversation with this snake who has convinced her that God has been less than honest about the results of partaking in this fruit from this one tree. Now to get the key to this, you've really got to go back to chapter 2 around verse 25 where we discover, listen to me, in verse 25 of chapter 2, we discover that God created humanity to operate without shame. You were created, Jesus, with the ability to operate without shame. Adam and Eve had no shame. They had no embarrassment. The first thing this ought to tell you is that shame is not in divine order, which means it has to be a weapon from the devil, of the devil. Because God created us with the ability to live without shame. But when Adam and Eve ate the fruit, the result of their sinful act was shame. That's when it hit me about this sermon. Don't miss this. The first emotion, Desmond, we are introduced to in the Bible is shame. The first emotion we're introduced to is not joy. It's not peace. Jesus. The first emotion we are introduced to in the Bible after sin is shame. Which means Shame is the enemy's number one emotional weapon to get you off of being who God created you to be. We're not introduced to depression first. We're not introduced to discouragement first. We're not introduced to insecurity first. We're not introduced to anxiety first. We're not introduced to worry first. We are introduced to shame shame is the emotional parent of every other negative emotion you birth oh god you're only insecure because you were pregnant from shame you're only negative because you were pregnant from shame you only have suicidal thoughts because you were pregnant from shame you're only arrogant because you were pregnant from shame. But today, Jesus, today, I need somebody to just yell today. I need you to yell it on Zoom. I need you to yell it on Facebook. I need you to yell it on the website. I need you to yell it on YouTube. Today, today is the day you're going to lose your shame. When Adam and Eve ate that fruit, they, they showed us shame. Shame was the first inner emotion we're introduced to. This was the very first time Adam and Eve ever experienced feeling unaccepted by God, and it was because of shame. See, Satan wants to take situations and have them become a part of your life resume which he will then attempt to use to permanently defame you, disqualify you, and discredit you so that you define yourself by the situation and never emotionally move past it. Now, who am I talking to now? Because you've been living with private shame and it's had public display now, you are in pain, paralyzed, paranoid, pitiful. You're being pimped, you're pessimistic, you're prideful, and you're passive. It has altered your demeanor and decisions in an attempt to derail your destiny. But I came to tell somebody on today, you can get past your shame, 
Jesus. I don't care what it is that led to it. I don't care if it was rape, molestation, divorce, bullying, public exposure, missteps, errors, toxic relationships, college dropout, incarceration, car foreclosed, house repossessed, bad credit, job termination, whatever it is. Jesus. You can get past your shame. Just, just ask the woman caught in adultery. Just, just ask the prodigal son. Just, just ask Peter after he denied Jesus. Just ask the woman at the well. Just ask the prostitute Rahab. Just ask David. You can get past. Jesus. You can get past your shame. Your family can be delivered. Your child can be delivered. You can be delivered. Jesus, help me today. Today is the day you're going to get past your shame. I want to I wanna show you, and I hope you write these things down and internalize them. And I hope, I hope you choose to activate them in your life. I see you, Karen. I can get past my shame. I see you. I see you writing it, Jackie. I see you, Yvette, today. I see you, Keisha. Today, I see you writing it. I see you writing it, Jan Teresa. I, I see you writing it. Today is the day. Jesus. I want to give you three things. And then we're going to go into deliverance. Here's number one. To deal with your shame, you've got to correct your confusion. Okay. Um, when shame entered the life of Adam and Eve, confusion came with it. Notice the text. They hid themselves from God, Jesus. And God comes looking for them. And God asks this question. Where are you? Now, now, we know God is omniscient. We know God is omnipresent. He knows everything all the time. At the same time, he's everywhere all the time at the same time, which means God does not ask this question because of a lack of awareness. But God asks this question to say to Adam, look where you are. <laughs> and why are you where you are? That's, that's, that's my question to somebody this morning. Look where you are. Why are you where you are? Why, why are you like you are? Why do you do what you do? Why do you talk like you talk? That's really what God was saying. Why are you? In other words, God was saying, think. Jesus, did you hear me? God said, think. See, that's what shame does. Shame causes confusion by getting into your thought process. Satan, yes, Satan wants, wants to flood your mind with condemnation by making you think thoughts that lead to embarrassment. And you take these thoughts and you embellish them. Then you take possession of them by expressing them repeatedly. I'm no good. Nobody wants me. They won't love me unless I sleep with them. I'm better off dead. You embellish the thoughts. Now a satanic condemnation has brought about a concentration that has led to a self-conversation that resulted in a false conviction. <laughs> well, let me say it again. Now, because your thoughts aren't right, a satanic condemnation led to concentration that birthed a personal conversation that resulted in a false conviction. Hear me today. Satan has a Rolodex of your experiences. <laughs> He's got a Rolodex of your shame issues, Jesus. He's got a Rolodex of your wrongs or how you were wronged. He's, he's got a Rolodex and he accesses them to torment you in your present. To mess up your decision making for your future. So, so watch. God, God starts this conversation. Where are you? He said we, we were naked so we hid. I'm coming back to that and and, and here's the pivotal question. 
Pastor Kim, we always, in, as preachers, concentrate on the question, where are you? That's not the question. Well, that's the one we always preach and teach. Where are you? That's, that's not the question. The real question that was pivotal here was, who told you you were naked? Jesus. We, we've been asking the wrong question. The, the question is not where are you? The question is, who told you what you think that got you where you are? You, 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 you've been trying to get delivered from the wrong question. The question is not where are you? you the question is who told you what you're thinking who told you you were depressed who told you you were unlovable who told you you were ugly who told you you were sick Jesus who told you you were unwanted who told you you were damaged goods because until you answer the source of your thinking, you can't change the substance. Who told you your family can't make it? Who told you you can't get past that adultery? Who told you because you were raped, you just got to let men have you? Who told you you have to have a drink to function every day? Jesus. Who told you you got to stay and let that Negro beat the hell out of you every day? Who, 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 who told you you got to seek attention to be affirmed? That's, that's the real question today. That's the question you've got to answer. Zoom and Facebook and YouTube and website. That's the question. Who told you? Who, who told you that? The inference God makes is, I didn't tell you that. <laughs> the inference God makes is, where you get that from? Because you didn't get that from me. Oh my God, oh, God deliver somebody in here. What voice are you listening to, Jesus? Who, who is the source of your conclusion? Some, some young person listening to me, talking about you, you're gonna graduate and you're just gonna try to make ends meet because you'll never make it in college. Who told you that? I got to, I got to hang out with the little jits on the corner and make fast. Who told you you were a jit? I got, I got to sleep with all of them because I wasn't a popular girl in school. And as long as I let them smash, I'll be pop. Who told you that? The pivotal question to your deliverance is not where are you? It's who, who told you that? Because God said, I didn't tell you that. You didn't get that from me. The only way God delivered. Ooh. The only way to break free from shame is to know what God says about you. And once I decree and declare what God says about me, then I go to work tearing down old patterns of shameful thinking that did not come from that. I came to speak to a demon today, to tell some demon, today we tear you down. We tear down stinking thinking. We tear down strongholds. We tear down pessimistic thinking. We cast down vain imagination. We get rid of all of those thoughts that are not from God. Who told you that? Who told you you weren't marriage material? Who told you you couldn't get the degree? Who told you you were damaged goods because they cheated on you? you daddy 
If you get your thinking right, it'll release you from guilt and shame. Can I talk to somebody today? I hope you're getting delivered. Stop being friends with your inner voice. Stop being friends with your inner voice until your inner voice becomes friends with God and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind until your mind gets renewed. You can't be friends with your inner voice. Some of y'all, your inner voice is your side chick. You know God's word, but you listen to your inner voice. Because the enemy is trying to make you redefine yourself. But I came to tell somebody today, stop believing. Hear what I'm about to tell you. Stop believing the condemning voice of shame. And start listening to the confirming voice of scripture. Scripture says you're the head and not the tail. Scripture says you're the first and not the last. Scripture says you're an heir and a joint heir. Scripture says that you're made a little lower than the angels, but you're higher than the beasts. And if I'm higher than a beast, then you can't call me a bitch because that's a dog. If I'm higher than a beast, then I'm not your nigga. If I'm higher than a beast, then don't call me stuff that belongs on the beast level. Change your thinking. I'm not your hoe. I'm not an addict. I'm not a victim. Jesus, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dumb. I'm not a thug. I'm not a criminal. I'm not an ex-con. I'm not an ex-anything, but... Because that implies that I once was what that is. I was never a con. I just made a decision. Who told you? I speak, I speak to some parent today that has your child scared and has your child insecure and has your child inferior and has your child feeling second class and second rate like they can't compete with others in school or they can't be who they are. I speak to you today that the reason your child is acting like they're acting is because of what you're telling them. And I say to that child, and I say to that teenager, I'm not being disrespectful, but the next time you start believing something they told you that's not in God's word, you got to say, God didn't tell me that. Here's the second thing. Shame distorts self-awareness. Come on, write that down. Shame distorts. Something I'd never thought about, and I've read this scripture over and over, over again. Look, look again at what Adam said. I, I want you to read or listen specifically to what Adam said. I want you to hear what Adam said. Hear it now. He, he, he says, listen, after their eyes were open, they realized they were naked. Watch what Adam says. He says in verse 10, to God, I heard you coming and I was ashamed, one version said, because I was naked. Stop right there. Stop because you'll miss it. It's so simple. It'll go past you. Adam said, we heard you coming, and we were ashamed, we were afraid. Watch what he says. And we were ashamed, and we were afraid because we were naked. Hmm. Hmm. Hear it again. The reason we hid is because, God, we heard you coming. Watch this. And we were ashamed because we were naked. 
not because of what we did. But because we were naked. Don't miss this. Don't miss. All you got to do is read the Bible. It, it, he doesn't say we hid because of what we did. He doesn't say we, we hid because we were scared of how we acted. He doesn't say we hid because we were insecure of what we did. He said we hid because we were naked. God, this is going to be the delivering part for somebody. Because Joshua, the daughter, his was deep. You hid because you were naked. Adam, you've always been naked. You hid because you were naked, but God made you naked. Oh my God, y'all don't get it. We, we heard you coming and we were scared because we were naked. We didn't want you to see us because we were naked. But Adam, I created, I, it ain't like God created them and covered them. You hid because you were naked? You hid from God because you were naked? You, you hid from God because you didn't want God to see you naked? That's how God saw you when he made you. You act like you showing God something he had not seen. See? Oh. You, you think God is going to feel something about what God sees because of what you did. But God sees you the same way God made you. Naked. Here's the point. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what was done to you. I don't care how repeated it was. I don't care how many people did it. I don't care how often you did it. I don't care how long you've been doing it. Here's the point. Who you are to God hasn't changed. Let me say that again. I don't care what you've done. I don't, I don't. It doesn't matter if they raped you or molested you repeatedly for years and nobody would believe you and everybody called you a liar. It doesn't, doesn't matter if you, if you flunked out of school and everybody has called you dumb and told you you'd never amount to anything. I, it doesn't matter if you, if you got five children and five baby daddies and everybody calls you promiscuous. It, it doesn't matter that you've never been able to keep a job and so everybody's saying to you, you're nothing. You're going to amount to nothing. You're worthless. You have no value. I came to tell you who you are to God has not changed. God said, you think you're showing me something I haven't seen? I saw you naked. I, I saw you when I made you. Here's the problem with shame. You changed how you see you. And then you projected how you see you onto God. God didn't create you covered up and then you messed up and lost what you were covered in. You look the same to God as you did when God created you. You just allowed what you did to cause you not to not look the same to you. Now you are ashamed of what you see. You're convinced because you don't like what you see. God doesn't like what he sees. Now notice I didn't say others don't like what they see because it doesn't matter what others see when they see you. As long as you see you right, you better, you better hear what I'm trying to tell you in here today. God still sees you. How God created you. How you see you is why you now do some of the things you do. It says, Adam, Adam and Eve got ashamed, so they covered themselves. What, what's been the covering for your shame? Has it been sex, alcohol, drugs, arrogance, insecurity? What's been the cover for your shame? Has it, 
Has it been staying in your room in the dark all day? What's been the cover for your shame? Has it been hanging out in the wrong crowds to be popular? What have you, what are you covering? Has it been jumping from job to job? Has it, has it been spending money you can't afford because now you're a label whore? What, what's, what's, what's the covering? What's, what's the cover? What's the covering? What's the lies you started believing? What's the covering? Disrespecting your parents because that makes you feel bad? What? Going to school, wanting to fight everybody because you think that gives you attention? What's the covering? What's, what's the covering? Because you've changed how you see you. But here's the problem. You didn't create you. And today you need to declare to yourself, I'm still who God saw me as. I'm still who God created. Some of you listening to me, and I'm about done. Some of you don't have healthy self-awareness. If, if that's you, I'm, I'm going out on the plank of boldness in the room if that's you slip your hand in the air you you don't have healthy self -aware. come on you came to church everybody in here know you here because you had some shame come on just slip your hand in there I'll put mine in the air because that's me that's my that's my cover unhealthy self-awareness that's me that's me I'm putting my hand in the air that's that's me now that might not be everybody so please don't put your hand up if that's not you you've got to help thank you Thank you for, for that admittance. Hear what I'm about to tell you. Self-awareness, hear what I'm about to tell you. Self-awareness is the ability to know the difference between you and your thinking. Let me say that one more time to everybody to put their hand in the air. Self-awareness, healthy self-awareness is the ability to know the difference between you and your inner voice. Healthy self-awareness is to hear the thought and say, that's not who I am. Jesus, help me today. So here's the reality. I don't need to line up who I am with what I think. No, no. I need to line up what I think with who I really am. Stop attaching your self-awareness to your mistakes. Stop attaching your self-awareness to your errors. Stop attaching your self-awareness to the things that have been done to you and what they said to you while they were doing it to you. God, deliver somebody. Stop, stop attaching your self-awareness to a parent who verbally abuses you or a spouse who physically abuses you or an ex-boyfriend who just wanted one thing from you or a girl who just wanted your money or a teacher who has destroyed your self-image. Stop attaching your self-awareness to your thinking. Attach your self-awareness to God's word. Adam said, we, we were scared because we were naked. Adam, God was like, well, that's how I created you. What I see ain't nothing I didn't see when I made you. Let me, let me, let me, let me conclude. And then those of you um, who are watching um, get ready the prayer line is going to go up as soon as I'm done those of you who are in this sanctuary if you're feeling the deliverance the intercessors are going to be ready to pray you through as soon as I'm done here's the last thing and here comes here comes the word of deliverance for somebody and I need you just to hear me out know that consequences are not results huh what you mean? What do you mean? Consequences are not results. Once again, we, we, we've read all these other verses, right? We've read all these verses where God says, you know, to the woman, you're going you, you to have pain when you're bearing children. Your husband's going to rule over you. And 
we've read all the verses about what God said to Adam is going to happen to the man. And we've even read the verses where, where God talks about what's going to happen to Satan. Um, but there's a verse, there's a verse we haven't looked at. And it is, to me, the pivotal verse in the story that I don't want you to miss. Here's, here's, here's what God said. Here's what the scripture says. The scripture says, so that you don't miss it, right around verse 21, God, I thank you for your word. We concentrate on all them other verses. God says, here are the consequences. Consequence for the woman, you're going to have pain and childbearing. Consequence, your husband is going to rule over you. Consequence for the man, by the sweat of your brow, you will eat food until you return to the ground. Consequence of the snake, you're going to wallow on your belly. Those are the consequences. Here comes the result in verse 21. So the Lord God, God, I love your word, made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and he covered them come here because your deliverance should have just started right there God, God said all of these are the consequences you're going to have pain you're, you're going to be ruled over you're going to sweat you're going to wallow on the ground all of those are consequences but here's the result in the midst of all of those consequences God said I'm going to cover you I wish I had a witness in here that could hear what I'm trying to tell somebody still got consequences but even the consequence gets covered see the consequence is on you But the result is on God. God is covering you. Which means your value to God does not change because of a shameful situation in your life. You are loved by God because of God's grace and not because of your goodness. Which means if I'm not loved because of my goodness, then I'm not unloved because of my badness. I want you to just throw your head back and just say, I'm covered. I'm, that means God has overruled your shame. God has overruled what happened to you. God has overruled the choices you made. God has overruled the decision you made. God overruled how they did you. God overruled how they treated you. God overruled what you think about yourself. There have been some people that have named us. Situations that have labeled us. And we have labeled ourselves. But today, you need to know you can come into the grace of God and experience the mercy of God and benefit from the love of God and get covered by the redemption of God. You are covered. Come on. I want you to notice one last thing. And I'm done. Thank you for covering me, God. 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 Thank you for covering my shame, my insecurity, my inferiority, my self-hate, my self-afflicted wounds. Thank you for covering me. I see you giving thanks on Facebook, yes. Yes, Charlotte, yeah, Robin, yeah, Tab, yes, Sylvia. Yeah, Lakeisha, yeah, Brittany, yeah, Nicole. Yeah, Geraldine, yes, Diana. Yes, Yvette, yes, Van, yes, Ophelia. Yes, Marilyn, yes, Catherine. Yes, Cynthia, yes, Linda, yes, Tabby. Yes, Marlene, yes, Teresa, yes, Herbert. Yes, Francie, yes, Francis, yes, Patricia, yes, Jackie. Yes, India, I... I want you to notice this last thing. Um, when, when you read the text, by the time God comes to them, they're already covered. <laughs> okay. Um, 
All you got to do is read the text and, and you're going to discover that when God got to them, they were already covered in fig leaves. <laughs> you don't even see me. Um, but read the text. The text says, God, God, I love your word, took skin and covered them. Now, there are two things about that. The first is this. God is suggesting that what you tried to cover you with ain't going to work. What? Jesus, help me teach somebody. God, help me teach somebody today. What, what, what you've been using to try to cover yourself. What you've been using to try to hide yourself. What you've been using to try to get over it. What you've been using to try to get past it. What you've been using to try to get breakthrough in it. It ain't going to work. They took fig leaves, which was stuff from trees. God took skin. Oh, this is going to get good. Which means for God to take skin, God had to kill something. Jesus. I'm trying not to get excited because some of y'all got it already. In order for God to take away what they tried to use and give them what he used, he had to kill an animal. Y'all didn't get it. Y'all, he had to kill, which meant for God to cover them, blood had to be shed. I came to tell somebody that the Lamb of God was slain from the foundation of the world and his blood covers you. His blood protects you. His blood delivers you. His blood forgives you. His blood gives you power. I came to tell you today, you are covered by the blood of Jesus. I want to talk to somebody today. That alcohol ain't more powerful than the blood. That sex ain't more powerful than the blood. That grief, that crack, that insecurity, that depression, that worry, that anxiety. It is not as powerful as You're covered by the blood. You're, you're covered by the blood. Shame loses its power. Shame loses its authority. Shame's voice has been muted. Shame's power has been canceled. Shame has been disqualified because the blood of Jesus has been shed for God to cover your sin, cover your shame, cover your mistakes, cover your decision, and whom the Son sets free. I need you to holler like you're free. I need you to holler like you're free. I need you to holler. Come on, Zoom, holler. Yes. I need some of y'all to put your face up there. Don't be shamed. Holler on Facebook. Holler on the website. Holler on YouTube. Holler on Zoom. I am. Come on, I need you to just break out in a worship. Come on, whatever you're going to do, lift your hands. Open up your mouth. Shed your tears. You are done with your self-hate. You are done with your self-inflicted wounds. You are done with being molested. You are done with being tried. You are done with being abused. You are done with being pimped. You are done with being told who you can't be, where you can't go, who you can't become, what you can't accomplish. The blood! Let it seep in. 
Come on, let it get in your pores. Let it get in your mind. Let it get in your thinking. Let it get in your mouth. Let it get in your faith. Come on. No more shame. No longer shame. No longer a 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 shame. No longer shame of that child because everybody knows you didn't marry the daddy and you ain't even with the daddy. No. No longer shame because everybody knows you can't keep a job and ain't even got a job. No. No, no, no longer shame when you go around your family because they know uncle raped you or molested you. No, no, no longer shame because everybody in your family knows you've been to jail and now you're out trying to make ends meet. No longer a shame. No longer ashamed because your parent beats you down with words. And no longer ashamed because that ex-husband put scars on your face. No longer ashamed because you tried to commit suicide. But God said you shall live and you shall not die. No longer ashamed. No longer ashamed. I speak to men because we think shame is an effeminate thing when in reality we men carry shame we just carry ours a little differently and I'm talking to some I hear it in the Holy Ghost I, I'm talking to some men right now I hear it in the Holy Ghost I'm, I'm talking to some men right now you, you you've been you've been faking masculinity you've been faking like you're big bad and bold you you've been operating like you know it all you you've been operating like nobody can't tell you nothing you you've been operating like you a player player you, you you've been operating like you the baddest thing God ever made when in reality all of it is your fig leaf covering for your shame You got shame because all the other men in your family seem to have accomplished what you didn't accomplish. You got, you got shame because you feel because you never knew your father. God, I heard this one heavy in the Holy Ghost. Because you've never known your father. Now, God, I hear this in the Holy Ghost. Because you've never had a relationship with your father. You know who your daddy is and he still don't want nothing to do with you and you're ashamed. But God said today, no more shame. You being a real man has nothing to do with the man that hasn't been in your life. You got shame and you're talking about, well, it's just, it's the curse on my family, generational curse. The devil is a liar. Jesus broke the curse. There aren't generational curses, they're generational choices. My, we, my family is just under a curse. The devil is a liar. You're making choices that are repeating cycles. Cycles aren't because of curses. Jesus Christ shed his blood. Curses are broken. We're talking about blessings. Millions, billions, trillions. God told me today, Travis made this shirt about generational wealth, but God told me to speak today and tell everybody this ain't just about wealth. This is about prosperity, joy, peace, abundance in every area of your life that when you begin to operate in a place where you are no longer ashamed, your blessings are going to be millions, billions, trillions. Your joy is going to be millions, billions, trillions. Your peace is going to be millions, trillions, billions. Your job, your business, it's going be millions, billions, trillions. I'm done. I'm done. 
God, I love your word. I love your word. I love your word. It's, it's, I'm not going to break this flow. I'm, oh, God. Today is the day where your new mantra, your new motto, your new, your new theme is no longer ashamed. I can run into who did it to me. I can run into who used me. I can look me in the mirror because I did it to me. And I'm looking in the mirror from the day on saying I'm changing my thinking. I ain't got to be perfect. See, the desire to operate, because this is me. So I, now I can talk this because this is me. The operate, uh, the desire and the thirst and the quest to operate in perfection is the fig leaf covering we use for insecurity. That's me. That's me. I micromanage details. And it's to convince me <laughs> that I'm better than the me I think I am. God said to me when I was reading through this word, he said, son, I, I, didn't, I didn't give you this sermon for all of them. I gave this for you. I'm just going to let them eavesdrop on my conversation with you. This desire we have to operate in perfection and we got to be perfect. It's a fig leaf covering. I ain't got to be perfect. I'm blessed. I'm chosen. I got favor. I'm God's child. I'm special. I ain't special because somebody down here loves me. I'm special because God loves me. God sent his son to die for me. God shed his blood for me. I ain't got to be perfect for none of y'all. But I first got to convince myself I ain't got to be perfect for me. I gotta be perfect for me. I can look myself in the mirror with every gray, every role, every bad choice, every bad decision. Facts people know, rumors people make up. <laughs> and lose all my shame. Because I'm covered. There have been consequences to some stuff I've done, but the result is I'm covered. I've had to deal with some consequences of some of my decisions, but the result is I'm covered. That's, that's why my marriage survived. That's why my children are blessed. That's, that's why my church is blessed. Because in spite of all my consequences, God covered me. And if he did it for me, as the oil flows from the beard, it flows down. I speak it upon you and your life and your family and your children and your marriage and your mind and your money and your business. Some of y'all been carrying shame since you were a teenager and nobody knew it. Some of y'all been carrying shame since you were a little child and nobody knew it. But today, no more shame. Who told you you were what you say you are? you you got to feel what you feeling about you who told you that what you did makes you that who told you that what was done to you God said who, who told you that who, who told you that you, you talking about I hid myself cause I was naked. God said, I seen you naked. I created you naked. Ain't nothing about you I don't know, God says. 
Here's what I want to do very quickly. Very quickly, Jesus, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Very quickly, if you if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're watching me today. You don't know Jesus Christ. So you're saved, but you don't have out. Listen, you want to be connected to this anointing. You want to be under this covering. You want to be connected to this ministry. You want to be connected to what we're doing here. Or today, I, this whole thing about the blood of Jesus, I don't know what you're talking about, Bishop. I've never done that. I've gone to church. I thought just because I went to church, I was all right. That ain't what the Bible says. The Bible says if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins, that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You never made that confession today or you're saved today, but you don't have a church. I don't care if you're in Africa, Australia, Europe, Mexico, California, Alaska, Nova Scotia. I don't care where you are. You can be a part of this church. All I want you to do is text what you see on the screen right now, TBC Decision, in caps, to 54244. That's all you've got to do. TBC Decision, to 54244. Bishop, I want Jesus Christ as my Savior. Bishop, I want to be a part of your church. I want to be connected to what you're doing. God, I thank you. Ooh, she got a boko. Ooh, radaba. Secondly, you're watching me today and you said, I'm not there, Bishop, but I need prayer. Put those prayer lines up for me right now. Intercessors are going to be waiting on you to call. There are two numbers. Now hear me, beloved. If you call and you don't get through, don't let the devil get inside you. I thought they were going to be there to answer. If they don't answer, that's because they're praying for somebody. Don't let the enemy get in you talking about, I ain't calling no more. I tried to call and they didn't pick up the phone. No, it's because they're praying for somebody. I know these persons waiting to pray with, pray with you. And trust me, keep calling back till you get them. I mean, I'm telling you, I don't care how long it takes today. Because the enemy is going to try to put something busy on your mind as soon as this service is over to make you forget about this today. I, I, I just heard this in the Holy Ghost. Some of you that are watching need to go back and watch it again at 6 o'clock. I just heard this in the Holy Ghost. Because there's something you miss, not intentionally, but I hear this in my spirit. There's something that God wanted you to hear that you missed because of something you were doing, not intentionally necessarily. But God is telling me to tell you to go back and watch the rebroadcast at 6 o'clock tonight or even at midnight. God just told me that in the Holy Ghost. Finally, I want my three intercessors to come down. Trishonda, Natasha, Dez. We're just going to flow out. Band is going to play. Thank you, Tim, for assisting me today. Hey, if you haven't had a chance to give, or if you just need to give again, go sow a seed. Go, Rondi, what I need us to do is back the jib all the way back. Um, yeah, because I need, so Trishonda, I want you over in this aisle. Make sure, we, yeah, we got it straight. Yeah, so Rondi, if we could back that all the way. Rondi, we actually probably going to have to just not use it um, because of the directions I'm going to give people. So here's what we're going to do. Pastor and I prayerfully and intentionally chose these three people. We, we, we talked through this. You're in here today, and, and we're going to keep stream on for just a minute. If you want to just share in the moment, and then they'll fade out at some point. But, man, if we could just keep playing until it's done. But Pastor and I, thank you so much, Rondi. Pastor and I intentionally chose these three. We, we were very intentional about this. Here's what I want you to do. We're going to have three lines. You want prayer. Now, you do know it's social distance. And uh, so, Natasha, you back up just a little bit, daughter. Yeah, I don't want to be getting... All right. 
everybody they're going to pray for you from the placard yeah, you stand not the intercessors but those needing prayer stand on that first placard now if you're in line you stand at the placards and so um uh, you get in one of these lines if you want to tell them what the shame is you know yell it loud enough under the mask you don't have to though you don't have to but you want a final prayer today that this word just get in your spirit then I'm going to ask you to get in these lines right now right now you want prayer right now come on just no, no ain't, 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 ain't got no shame no shame some of you get in this line and here's what we're going to do after you are prayed for you leave out of the opposite line so in other words if you're in Pastor Dez's line you walk and go out this aisle if you're in Natasha's line you walk out this aisle if you're in Shoshanda's line you walk out this aisle all right come on I see y'all getting in line I see you God I thank you for your word today God, I, I pray over each of these intercessors right now. Consecrate and anoint them. Give them a spirit of discernment right now. That even without being told, they're going to know what needs to be prayed over. You're going to give them, God, a spirit of discernment. So that they are going to know what to speak particularly and specifically over everyone. I decree and declare today that deliverance has already taken place. But we sign, seal, and we deliver it through the power of prayer right now. Thank you today for these intercessors. And let the anointing leave them without touching anybody. But just like your son did it for the centurion without going to his house but just speaking a word it's going to be done and for those who may watch in on zoom or on facebook or on the stream let them feel the glory in this place in jesus name amen if you want to get in line if you just want to sit where you are for a minute all right intercessors you can go right on hallelujah intercessors in the back as well so some of you who aren't in line I'm looking in the back all right I see let me see who's back there. okay I see you can if you're sitting uh, you can go to one of them in the back as well or you just wait right where you are wait right where you are wait wait right where you are yes hallelujah as others are leaving the line if you want to get in line come on have a spirit of boldness today the release from shame is a choice. So today you make the choice. I didn't come just to hear a word. I came to get deliverance for me, for my family, for my children, for my mind, for my thinking. You just jump in line, just jump in line. And they're going to pray in Jesus' name. 